Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the fuel filter on this 2004 Chevrolet SSR, and this applies to the 2003 and 2004 model year of the Chevrolet SSR only, not the 2005 and 6, because the fuel filter location was changed inside the fuel tank in the fuel sender unit in the 2005 and 6 model years, which came with the LS2 engine. The earlier two model years, which came with the LM4 5.3 liter engine, has the external fuel filter that's on the front of the fuel tank. So. After the introduction and information disclaimer, we'll go through the part number that I'm using here. I'm using AC Delco replacement. There are a variety of quality aftermarket ones you could use, but I'm using an AC Delco replacement. We'll go through how to depressurize the fuel system so that when you remove the lines, you don't get sprayed with fuel. And also a cautionary thing here is since you are going to be working with fuel, make sure you're performing this operation in a well-ventilated area. I'm actually performing this outside in the open air so that any fumes that come from the gasoline are vented to the outside and make sure you have the proper supplies and uh, protective eyewear and gloves to, to work with. So after the introduction and information disclaimer, we'll go through all the tools. Not a big list, but just make sure you're safe and performing this as quickly as possible. So thanks for coming to the channel. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do so. It's free to you. I would greatly appreciate it. And if you like the contents of this video, hit that like button, that thumbs up button on the screen there. That would be greatly appreciated by myself. So this video gets ranked higher on searches for things like this. This also applies to the Chevrolet Trailblazer of 2002 to 2004 model years and the GMC Envoy of 2002 to 2004 as well because the same fuel tank and fuel filter type was used on those as well. So let's get to work. Please review the automotive information, repair, and modification guidelines on this screen. Seek the advice of a repair professional if you're unsure how to perform any repair or modification safely and correctly. All repairs and modifications are performed at your own risk. Let's talk about the supplies that are necessary for the fuel filter replacement on this 2003 and 4 SSR. Again, this is only for those two model years. The 2005 and 6 have a different fuel filter located in the fuel tank, and this video does not cover the replacement of that fuel filter. But the one I chose was the AC Delco GF831. The older GM part number is 88983068, which is actually printed on the box. A new GM part number seems to be available, 19368932, as I was preparing for this video. So if you're looking for a part number, one of those three should locate the appropriate one for your 2003 and 2004 Chevrolet SSR. In addition to that, I have some additional tools and protective gear. I have a needle nose pliers that I might be able to use on the clamps that are to be removed for the fuel lines. I have a Phillips screwdriver that I'm going to use to remove the single screw at the top of the clamp that holds in the fuel filter in on the front of the fuel tank. I have some protective gloves for my hands because I will be touching gasoline at points as I'm draining out the fuel from the fuel lines and protective eyewear. I also have a metal pan here because I'm going to be collecting the fuel that is draining out of the fuel lines into something that can safely collect the gasoline for later disposal. First step we have to perform is to depressurize the fuel system and to accomplish that we're going to remove the relay that powers the fuel pump inside the gas tank. And to get to that, we have to be in the engine bay fuse box here. So we're gonna take the cover off. We're gonna to refer to that chart in just a moment. And then of course the inner cover, take that off, set that off to the side. And on the 2003 and four model years, the location for the relay that powers the fuel pump is number 35 F slash PMP. So 35 is located here on the chart. And that corresponds to this location here. So I'm going to go ahead and remove that and set that off to the side. And now with that removed, I'll go in and attempt to start the engine. It may run for just a moment since there is some pressure in there at the moment and fuel, but as that drains off the pressure, the fuel is consumed, the engine will die out. I'll attempt maybe one or two more starts after that to confirm that it's simply not starting. So we'll then have completed the depressurization up here via the fuel pump relay removal. The second part will do down by the fuel tank. So let's start the engine and get it to die out. So with that, we've accomplished our 
first phase of depressurization by removing that relay. I'm going to leave it out till we get to the end of the task so we don't have any inadvertent starts in case we forget that we're in the middle of this. I'm just going to leave that out to the end. So let's move under the vehicle. Here's the location of the fuel filter on the 2003 and 2004 SSR. It sits in a plastic holder here on the front of the fuel tank and there's a plastic ring that goes around with a Phillips screw that is used to uh, tighten down on the fuel filter to hold it in place. The two fuel lines, the one coming from the fuel pump in the fuel tank comes to this end of the fuel filter and then this one goes out to the front of the engine. There is a pressure test access point here which we're going to use in just a moment to depressurize any remaining pressure. I would advise to do this in a well-ventilated area since you will be getting some fuel out of this as you remove the fuel filter and you're going to also be close to the exhaust system here and make sure it's cool to the touch so you don't inadvertently move your arm and hit the catalytic converter or exhaust pipes in this area. I have it up on my ramps in the front. I have the wheel chocks in the back, emergency brake on, and uh, it's enough room to get underneath here. I had to take advantage of a little dip in my driveway so I can get the cameras and everything in here, but you can do this with it simply on ramps, on jack stands, or on a lift. So we're going to go ahead and remove the cap to this pressure ac test access point. And I'm going to use this Phillips screwdriver and I'm going to back away. I have my gloves on and my protective eyewear on as well. And I'm going to go in from the side here a little bit. Actually I can't. Push on that a little bit. A little bit of fuel came out. Now with the fuel pressure relieved there as well uh, by the fuel filter, I'm going to now take the Phillips screwdriver and loosen this Phillips screw on the top here. Gives me a little flexibility of moving the filter around if it's loose already. Now that I've removed the excess pressure at this uh, bleed point and I've removed the screw from the clip, I'm going to lift the filter out of its cradle there and that'll give me a little bit better access to the clips that I need to compress here. Again, this should be done in a well-ventilated area and don't put your face directly underneath here. Compress the blue clips. Okay, I should be able to walk this line off the filter. Again, more fuel coming out, so again, don't put your face below that. That's why I have the pan and protective eyewear on. I'm going to tip it just a little bit on the filter to let it drain out as well into the pan. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the line from the fuel pump in the tank. It did. And now I'm going to tip over the fuel filter to drain the fuel that's in it into the pan. Here's the new fuel filter. It is the same um, part that I had originally in the vehicle. So the original one and this one are both marked with an out. So we want to make sure that the out goes to the line that goes to the front here. And then the in is the one from the fuel pump that's inside of the fuel tank here. You want to make sure that this is clean, no dirt or debris, and also you should probably examine the edge or inside of each of these to make sure there's no dirt or corrosion because they are exposed to the road and depending on your location and uh, what weather you experience with your vehicle you could have some dirt there so make sure you clean anything before you disassemble it would be preferable if you notice any large chunks of debris or dirt on it before you take it apart. So now that I've got uh, this uh, ready to go in. Again, this is the out and we're going to slide the front one which goes to the front which is the out 
I'm going to slide that on there. There's an O-ring in there that is sealing on the outer tip of this. And then if we get it all the way on, it should snap into place. You should hear a click like that. And then for the one from the fuel tank, fuel pump, we're going to do the same thing. And it's on there, it's working down, and we should hear a little snap. We did. And we have the cap for the pressure bleed valve there. So now I'm going to put this back into its holder. And there's a little recess for the in tube of the filter. So make sure you get the in tube into the little notch of the thing that holds it on here. And now we're going to put the Pull up screw back in that holds the clamp in place. Before we tighten up the Phillips screw, let's make sure that we have the in tube for the fill filter in the notch in the holder, which it is. We have these two on and they had already clicked. I have the cap on. So the last thing I need to do here is to tighten the screw. Don't over torque it, just make sure it's snug. So the lines are in place, clamp is on, and it's in the notch like it's supposed to be. All right, we should be done down here. Um, the fuel that has drained out, we want to probably clean that up a little bit, um, otherwise you'll have a fuel smell, uh, but make sure you use a rag that is appropriate for cleaning up gasoline and dispose of it properly for given your environmental requirements in your area of the country. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and go to the top side. We're going to come back down here in a little bit and check for any leaks. But uh, right now we're going to go back to the top side, put the uh, relay back into the fuse box and attempt to start the vehicle and then check for leaks. Now I'm going to reinsert the relay for the fuel pump back into the socket where it came out of the, which is socket number 35 on the 2003 and 4 Chevrolet SSR. So let's go ahead and put that back in. And now I'm going to go ahead and attempt to start the engine and see if we can get any leaks down below at the fuel filter. With the engine running and the fuel lines pressurized, check the fuel filter and its connections make sure they're nice and dry like you see right now. Take the vehicle for a test drive and check it again, make sure everything's nice and dry like you're seeing now. And after 50 or 100 miles, check it again just to be sure. Can't be too careful with pressurized fuel lines. So with that, I hope you enjoyed watching this video. It was helpful to you and you enjoyed the content. Please hit that like button. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do so now. It's free to you. And come back to the Retro Car Guy 530 YouTube channel for more SSR content. Thanks. If you like this video, smash that like button. If this is the first time you stop by the channel, please click the subscribe button to the right. It's free. Click that bell notification to get notified when I upload new videos. Follow Retro Car Guy 530 on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Patreon. Thanks for coming to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.